For any student, trying to succeed in higher education can be a challenge. Not only is the academic work more advanced, but there's also a higher degree of independence required. Even the best prepared students sometimes struggle with the transition to campus life. For students with mental health needs, there are additional challenges. They have to face all the academic and social hurdles that everyone else confronts while simultaneously managing their own health and wellness. This can be stressful and difficult, and these students too often find themselves unable to complete their educations, cut off from the many positive life outcomes associated with getting a degree. To help students overcome those unique hurdles, many colleges and universities are developing supported education programs. These programs are designed to connect students with supports and accommodations that can help keep them on campus. They typically rely on the coordinated efforts of administrators, counselors, faculty, and students in creating the conditions for campus success. The University of Utah is an example of an institution that has made significant efforts to implement the supported education model. To get a full picture of their approach, we spoke with members of the university community that play several essential roles in their supported education network. They included the director of the Center for Disability Services, the director of the University Counseling Center, faculty, and most importantly, students that rely on the program. We began our investigation by speaking with Scott McAward, who runs the University's Center for Disability Services, and his colleague Lauren Weitzman, who is in charge of the University Counseling Center. Their two offices work in concert to take the lead in supporting students with mental health needs at the University of Utah. So I oversee the office of staff that uh, work with all students with disabilities on, on our campus. Our office is charged with uh, providing accommodations and support to any student that uh, is eligible as a student with a disability. The students that we work with, probably 30 to 40 percent would be classified with a psychological or psychiatric disability. One of the most important things for an office like ours is how are we collaborating across campus? Uh, what are our partnerships like? And are we able to really provide a more holistic support network for our students? The Counseling Center is, is one of our, our number one key partners. They provide the psychological counseling uh, group. They provide all sorts of, of services around mental health. I have been at the Counseling Center um, for at least 15 years. It kind of depends how you count it. Um, I'm currently in my 11th year as director of the Counseling Center. We're the primary mental health counseling support for students on campus. And um, for us, we that means we offer uh, several different services. We have seven licensed psychologists, four licensed clinical social workers, we have an associate clinical mental health counselor, and then a small psychiatry staff. We have a lot of options for students in terms of who they might sit down and talk with um, as a counselor, and it's giving another way for students to connect in terms of learning more strategies about how to manage stress and anxiety. So I think we are relatively innovative in terms of the services that we provide, and I think we have that leeway here. I would compare us to let's say a small private school where the model is often very different. So it's a smaller staff. Um, the staff are doing proportionally more one-on-one -on -one clinical work. We've always here operated from a model that again kind of expands counseling center service delivery functions outside of just the therapy room. While it's essential to have key individuals in place to oversee a quality supported education program, their ability to connect with other parts of the campus community is just as central to any program's overall effectiveness. I think our program effectiveness is due to relationships. The relationships we build is really what helps us be the, uh, supportive to our students. Um, it's very different if we, can, if we can say, hey, you know, I know this person in this office, that might be really helpful, let's see if we can get you hooked up with that. And it's also the relationships are so important when uh, we have to reach out to a faculty member, the department, and, and collaborate to solve a problem together. So I think without the relationships, we, we just can't be effective. Being proactive is critical. I always um, struggle when I have to reach out to a department or a person to solve an issue or solve a problem when I've never had contact with them before. Because now I'm trying to build a relationship at the same time I'm trying to address an issue. And so it's always more effective to have those relationships from the get-go, even if you don't necessarily need to tap into them. And I think it's it's also being able to look at, um, you know, how is your environment, how is your office 
um, being inclusive and welcoming to students that might be struggling with mental health issues. We want to make sure that students know that the Counseling Center exists, so we're very active in terms of collaborating with other campus units, providing prevention and outreach programming. We recognize that it doesn't always feel comfortable to think about going in for counseling, and so we put a lot of time and energy into how we can, you know, sort of decrease some of the barriers that people might be experiencing around seeking help. One of the most important partners in setting a positive tone for serving students with mental health needs is the University Administration. For both Disability Services and the Counseling Center, it's important that those running the university at the highest level buy into the idea that mental health on campus truly matters. It's also important that you work with your administration to help understand uh, issues of disabilities and issues of mental health. And uh, that can often be a, a challenge, and so it's, I think it's understanding uh, your administration on your campus that you report to and up. Uh, where are they with with that? What is our understanding? And um, really approach that again collaboratively about how you can you partner. I think we're very fortunate to have strong support. Um, as a matter of fact, the associate vice president to whom I report was a previous counseling center staff member and, and so she gets it and I think our administration understands that providing effective counseling center support, counseling services is a strong piece of that. Our administration is very supportive of what we do. They understand our office, they understand our students, they understand the importance. And so we, are, we feel very supported by the institution as a whole. It's not always the case. And so a challenge sometimes is how do you work with the campus administrators to understand the importance of what you do and how you play a bigger role. While the administration in many ways sets the tone for how mental health is perceived and how seriously it's taken, it's the faculty that interacts with students on a daily basis. The people in the classrooms with the students have a key role to play in the supported education process. We got the perspective of one longtime faculty member, Professor Tim Chambliss. Supported education, to me, is a, a partnership with faculty and staff at a major public university to help its students. To, uh, especially students with special needs. I have uh, worked with staff at the center and uh, communicated to them my desire to, uh, to uh, be a, a partner uh, and uh, as helpful as I can be for students who uh, uh, have a wide range of disabilities. I think first of all we start with do, do the staff in our office um, no staff in other offices are we familiar i think there's something to be said for for facetime with other offices on campus i walk by there every day sometimes i'll stick my head in and say hi uh, i have a good working relationship with all the members um, and uh, i've been involved uh, uh, with the center going back gosh about 22 years every semester i will have at least one student who is um, very depressed that student will come to see me. And I realize very quickly uh, from sim apparent symptoms that the student is depressed. So uh, I will actually walk that student over uh, to uh, the counseling center where there is always at least one counselor on call at any hour uh, during the day. And we can meet with a student uh, very quickly. I, I, I know that I am not the appropriate person. Uh, I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but I can be, um, a helpmate to students who uh, maybe need that assistance to be able to sit down with a trained professional to try to talk out and, and resolve or lessen some very real emotional, personal problems. While the administrative staff lays the groundwork for supported education and the faculty facilitates accommodations in the classroom, it's ultimately the students themselves that drive the supported education process, taking advantage of the services available to them and advocating for their own needs. Uh, we also really want to help foster independence in the student and self-advocacy um, in terms of helping students learn the tools that are going to help them be successful after they're gone from our campus. Uh, and that's, that's an integral part of everything we do. You know, we, we might have a student for four or six years, depending on their program, but then they're going to be out working in their career. Um, and the more tools they can pick up about how to get the support they need now, is going to benefit them in the long run. The University of Utah has been supporting me in pursuing my uh, educational goals in many ways. Since I have bipolar, it's 
really hard to predict when I'm going to have a rough time. Sometimes, you know, the hypomania or the depression will just come out of nowhere. Through the counseling center, through um, the disability center, I have been given accommodations such as flexible deadlines and um, that's been a lifesaver because, you know, when these things happen, I become completely incapacitated and I'm not able to work, I'm not able to function, my priorities change. And so having these flexible deadlines, it allows me to go to my professors and say, hey, I'm having a rough time with this. Especially in the fall, I have, I have an episode that'll usually last for anywhere from a week to two weeks. And so this allows me to have those full two weeks of assignments that I've missed to be able to still get those in without being penalized for them being late. Most professors without accommodations, if an assignment's late, you don't get any credit for it. And so, you know, having this, they're able to work with me to help me get back on track so that the rest of the semester I can be on par with the rest of my peers. Well, the most important thing they did for me was that they gave me the paperwork and the means and the approval to get my emotional support animal, which changed everything because I could sleep at night, I could be functional enough to get my homework done, and, you know, I think the big part there is that they collaborate a lot between the counseling center and disability services. My emotional support an animal changed my life. If I had not been involved with the counseling center and the disability services and been able to get that, I would not be able to stay in school. Um, I almost actually left school because things got out of control and it wasn't until the counseling center pointed me in the direction of disability services and I started talking to my disability services advisor that he said, look, you have all of these options, smaller class sizes and things like that that were really helpful. And through just everyone in these programs really wanting to help, that is how I stayed in school. And it was just really the people caring more than anything, probably. It made it possible for me to succeed on my own. Instead of using it as a crutch, it's more like it teaches you methods and skills and places. It's not a boost that other kids aren't getting. One of the big differences between the experiences of students in higher education and those of students at the high school level has to do with the greater demand for self-advocacy in college. K-12 students are guaranteed certain protections under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and have individual education plans to lay out the specifics of their accommodations. College students, on the other hand, are more loosely protected against discrimination under the Americans with Disabilities Act. As a result, it falls to students to advocate for specific accommodations themselves. I've had both positive and negative experiences when dealing with the faculty and the accommodations. Um, a lot of them, they're very careful to make sure that it's not an unfair advantage and sometimes to the point where they don't really want to give the accommodation or they go flexible deadlines, all right, we'll give you an extra day to make up this two weeks that you've missed out on. And so um, when I've had experiences like that, I'm able to go to the disability center and my counselor there and kind of give them the situation. And because we work so closely, he's able to email the professors and let them know what's going on. I would say most of the teachers I have had, if I've requested an accommodation through disability services, have been very willing to work with me. Some are a bit reluctant. I think there are still some faculty members here and probably on every campus that don't really see mental health concerns as any kind of disability. It's rare that that happens, but I have had to withdraw from a course or two because the teacher is just... It's not that they completely deny the accommodation request, it's just that they don't see it as real as much. So they agree to it and then it does the follow through is missing sometimes. Yeah, I would say for the most part my experience is that the faculty are receptive to 
um, meeting students' needs and are willing to work with students. Of course, there's going to be some variation in that. So we'll meet with students who, you know, are struggling in a particular class, and you know, we always advise them to go talk with a faculty member if that's something that they feel comfortable with. Some faculty are more open to, let's say, a letter of support from us than others. Oftentimes, we interact with faculty when there is an immediate situation of concern that they're involved with and that's where our faculty liaison program or just kind of our day-to-day -day operations for how we handle crisis situations are really important because they always can there's always somebody here for faculty to talk to if they have a question about a particular student or how to help a student get the help that they need. Uh, some faculty members are very receptive, uh, very sensitive and uh, will make the time available to help students. Uh, others uh, are a little more concerned about uh, making sure that they meet the time deadlines and therefore they're a little less cooperative, uh, unfortunately, uh, with uh, um, uh, students who may need a little more time uh, in the classroom. I think my department is quite receptive and I, and I am an advocate uh, as well. Uh, um, and I, uh, I have it indicated both in my syllabus uh, and, I, and I believe all the professors in the department have a paragraph in their respective uh, syllabi that indicates that uh, we will do what is necessary to help students with special needs. This is a very important subject to me because I've actually had students uh, in their lives. And uh, you know, you, you, can, you can see that maybe a student is uh, unhappy, maybe distracted. But uh, I don't know if you're ever really ready uh, for uh, finding out that a student has committed suicide. So uh, having had that experience, I try to be proactive. I try to be uh, informational and encouraging to have students come and talk to me. And then uh, we'll do what we, whatever we can to be able to uh, lower their stress load. Uh, being you know, an examination, a paper, sometimes just a large classroom can be a very stressful experience for some students. So I indicate to my students that this is a two-way street. There's a, there's a partnership here. If they have a special need, if they'll discreetly explain to me or convey to me that they have a, a, a need and need a special accommodation, I'm going to do whatever is necessary to be able to provide it. We have a lot of success stories in that regard and we have some um, more um, challenging where we have to take a little extra time to uh, work with the faculty, particularly faculty that may not have worked with our office or our students before. You know we have support from our administration, we have staff who are willing to you know get outside and connect with people. It's a really collaborative place here to work in terms of developing and maintaining relationships with campus partners and faculty and staff because they're the ones who oftentimes will first encounter a student who might need our services and if they can you know facilitate a referral. While much of the responsibility to make supported education work falls to the student, there is no doubt that some schools do a better job of setting students up for success than others. So what makes the program at the University of Utah work? This is my third university that I've attended. And in the other two, I didn't even really know that they had a system set up where I could receive help. I um, just went through and tried to make do with the best I could. What makes this one effective is how visible it is. how. Um, at the beginning of each semester, all of the professors say, if you have any needs through the disability services, come up and talk to me if you're registered. They make it known that this is an option that's available. And because of that, I was able to know I could get the help here. I use the counseling services quite frequently. I usually um, visit my counselor every other week and then um, Every two to three weeks, I visit a psychologist there as well. I'm able to go there because the prices there are lower than what my copay is for the insurance I'm on. And so, not only that, but they're able to communicate with the disability center and I'm able to get letters from them to give to my professors. To a certain extent, it's up to the student to coordinate off-campus and on-campus resources together but I've, I haven't run into problems with 
advising, counseling, or disability services that would say, no, we won't work with that off-campus organization. They usually will give you the referral, and then if you need something to come together between the two, it's your job to, you know, get, they'll give you the paperwork they need, but you're, you're the one who has to go get all the materials and get it together. The entire effort to make supported education work happens within the context of a larger campus community. Just as it does within society at large, the stigma that can be attached to mental health on campus can color the experience of individuals. For the administrators and faculty we spoke with, the conversation about mental health has become more open over the long term. For students, however, there's still a perceived reluctance among their peers to take mental health seriously. I think we're seeing the stigma of mental health has, has improved over the past 10 or 15 years, and yet still many students feel as though it's not okay to seek help for depression and for anxiety. So we want to remove that barrier primarily. How we generate a positive uh, image of mental health on campus, uh, you know, and that's a, that's a hard question, that's a big question. You know, obviously our office uh, talks about it a lot. The Counseling Center talks about it a lot. Um, but what other offices do? Um, is it being talked and discussed on the faculty side? Um, is it being talked in housing? And I think that's really how it's, it's achieved. And that it's being discussed in those ways, I think helps make it more of a, of a welcoming, inclusive environment. Yeah, in terms of the culture surrounding mental health on campus, I think it's changing in positive ways. I think there's something about kind of younger students, you know, or the newer generation of students who are coming in who I think in some small ways stigma is getting lowered a bit, but I still think it's prevalent out there. People are coming to campus already, um, you know, having dealt with a psychiatric disability or mental health concern, and so they, um, you know, are a little bit more savvy about how to work with that. Parents are becoming more active and making sure that students are getting the support they need. There's definitely still a stigma associated with it, and, you know, that's one of the big problems because it's hard enough to go through your teachers when you can't go to your friends and say, look, I have this mental health concern and it's really causing me problems in my life. I need some support in this way and without feeling like people are going to either walk around on eggshells when they're around you or treat you differently or just kind of laugh it off and tell you to get over it, you know, and none of those are really good responses that you want. And so approaching people about it is very intimidating and I don't like to do it at all. It's kind of a chicken and egg thing because when people are too afraid to tell people, oh yeah, I have a psychiatric disability, then people don't know like, oh, my friend has a psychiatric disability, that doesn't mean they're weird because they don't know that the normal people around them or the normal people around them have those concerns as well. I feel like a person's ability to reach out and get help when they have a mental health issue, um, get these accommodations is kind of a personal one. It's something that's within themselves. Personally, it's hard for me to accept the accommodations. Like, I have them there, but to actually use them, it requires me to swallow my pride and admit that I need this help, that without it, I'm not going to get the grades that I should be getting and that that can be really hard because that requires me to admit that without this help I can't perform the same as the other students. It requires me to admit that I have a disability and since it's a mental one that no one else can see, I'm afraid that people are going to judge me and be like, oh you're just trying to you're just trying to get a little extra help, you're just trying to take the easy way out, or, or even worse, you know, that's cheating, which it's not, but at times it can be difficult for me to admit that I need that help. While accommodating students with mental health needs can be complicated, the success realized at the University of Utah shows not only that it can be done, but that it's definitely worth doing. To make supported education work, it's important to create a network that allows students to find entry into the program at a variety of points. This happens when the culture of support extends beyond disability offices and counseling centers. 
that expands into every part of the university, guided by a strong sense of campus-wide collaboration. It's essential that administrators buy into the importance of addressing mental health on campus and helping students that require accommodations to succeed. It's also necessary to get the faculty on board so they can work with students to find solutions to their classroom challenges and connect them with the help they need when they recognize an issue. Perhaps most importantly, students with mental health needs must be encouraged to advocate for themselves and be given the tools they need to thrive. When a university makes the effort to help students with mental health needs through supported education, it becomes a more inclusive place and students get the opportunity for success that higher education represents for everyone. Without university support, I probably would not be able to graduate. Um, I don't think I would have learned some of the skills that I really needed or found the right places to get the help that I needed in order to get through my classes. And now as it is, I'm set to graduate next year. If I didn't have the support that I have here, I honestly think I would end up dropping out of college. I wouldn't graduate if I didn't have these accommodations, if that wasn't in place, then what would probably happen is my GPA would drop so low that I would get kicked out. Without this help, I wouldn't be in college. For more information, visit cafetacenter.net.